All right, good morning and welcome to a regular meeting of the panel of utility commissioners and staff of the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority held today, Wednesday, July 27th by remote teleconference. Uh, my name is Chairman Marissa Gillette and I'm joined virtually today by my colleagues, the Vice Chairman Jack Sikoski and Commissioner Michael Karen. We have a regular calendar as well as a consent calendar in front of us today. So we'll turn first to today's regular calendar. There's one item on today's regular calendar, docket number 140719, REO6. Here is investigation into the redesign of the residential electric bill. Uh, it's a five-year review, and we have the uh, uh, presentation of the final decision by um, Stephanie Cohane with authority staff, please. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning to commissioners. Uh, in this decision, the authority directs the Connecticut Light and Power Company doing business as Eversource and the United Illuminating Company to redesign their residential customer bills and the respective websites in order to facilitate customers' understanding of their bill components. And during the EDC's annual standard service and last resort service proceedings in uh, 2020 in dockets 20101 and 20102, the authority had received comments um, from the public concerning, concerning customer frustration about um, what was considered delivery portions of their electric bill. So in the final decisions in those two dockets, the authority found that um, made a finding that as the electric system became more complex and regionalized, that state expenses are increasingly recovered from all customers through um, and various energy and transmission rate reconciliation mechanisms that there was really a need for further modifications to the customer um, bill and information uh, layout. In addition, um, the Connecticut General Statute Section 16245D subsection A um, states that every five years, the authority shall reopen a docket to ensure a standard billing format and internet website for a customer's account summary remains a useful tool for customers to compare pricing policies and charges among suppliers. So as a result, the authority established this docket to examine whether the current um, EDC's billing formats and internet websites for respect, uh, residential customers um, still remained a useful tool and determined whether, uh, what modifications were needed. Uh, in this proceeding, the authority delegated this initial review um, to its Office of Education Outreach and Enforcement, or EOE, and instructed EOE and other DACA participants to consider changes to the EDC's um, bill design and format and associated websites based on the following four objectives. So one of the first objective, any, um, for any billing component or line item provided, customers should be able to easily identify the associated cost driver or understand, for example, whether it um, fits into a category such as supply, delivery, distribution, public policy, transmission, and so forth. Second, that all languages and terms on a customer's bill should be more accessible and more easily understood. Third objective was that the bill should facilitate an understanding of why a line item or billing component had changed and when it might be projected to change again. And then fourth and final objective is where feasible on bill education and explanation should be prioritized um, with clear directions on how to you know, obtain additional information um, online. So EOE in this proceeding sought um, comments and recommendations from participants. They issued um, two rounds of requests for written comments and held a tech meeting. Then on September uh, 30th of 2021, um, filed as a motion its recommendations of a pr proposed final decision in this docket. The authority then issued a proposed final decision in October of last year, provided um, the opportunity for written exceptions. It was determined then that an additional um, technical meeting was needed. And so the authority held a technical meeting in November of last year and received additional written comments in December. Um, regarding the topics discussed at the technical meeting. The authority then issued a revised proposed final decision on July 11th and provided final opportunity for participants to file written exceptions. So in this decision, the, the authority determines that both of the EDCs should have a similar bill to facilitate the timely and faithful realization of these objectives that I outlined. Eversource had re redesigned its bill, residential bill in 2016 whereas UI had not modified its residential bill in approximately 20 years. 
um, as docket participants expressed a preference for the Eversource sample bill that was provided, um, the authority used the Eversource bill to guide directed bill redesign modifications. So um, as a next step, as an ensuing orders in this decision, each EDC, um, no later than September 12th of this year, shall submit a mock-up of the residential bill reflecting the design modifications described in the decision, as well as um, a, a simple uh, mock-up that should be detailed, accompanied by a detailed cost estimate and breakdown of costs um, to complete such modifications and projected implementation timeline. And authority has and indicated that it will, um, stakeholders will have an additional um, opportunity to comment on this compliance filing. Um, in addition, there are a, a additional um, orders um, and ensuing compliance for the EDCs in terms of implementation of this, uh, this directive. With that, staff recommend this decision for adoption by the panel. Thank you, Ms. Cohen. Is there a motion? I move adoption, Madam yeah. Chairman. Second. Thank you, gentlemen. The item has been regularly moved and seconded. Um, I'll just take the opportunity to briefly comment. Um, uh, I want to thank the authority staff as well as the Office of uh, EOE for their uh, lengthy and um, productive conversations with stakeholders. Uh, regarding change, needed changes to the residential electric bill. Um, you know, I've said this before, uh, and my colleagues have expressed this as well, like redesigning the bill is uh, not in and of itself going to bring costs lower. But I think we uh, do help, uh, hope uh, that the transparency um, that will be provided by these redesigned uh, electric bills, particularly into the cost drivers, uh, will um, help facilitate you know, tough conversations with um, what should be funded through your electric bill uh, and when and why. So I'm looking forward to the deployment of the redesigned um, electric bills. Uh, it will take a number of months as Ms. Cohen outlined for the, the redesigns to come to fruition as there are needed IT changes uh, and, and things of that nature that I know I'm looking forward to the rollout. Of, uh, of those bills as I think it will um, help facilitate more productive conversations um, moving forward. So um, with that, let me see if my uh, colleagues have anything to say before we uh, take the vote. Uh, Vice Chairman? No, I would just echo your comments. I mean, this has been a work in progress for quite some time. People are always coming to us asking what is on that electric bill? Uh, what am I paying for? How much, how much am I paying? So. Hopefully this make it uh, clearer, and I, I think your point's very well taken, Madam Chairman, that uh, this doesn't mean, uh, ho hopefully long-term, the, the prices will come down, but this will just tell uh, very specifically what you're paying, how much you're paying, and why you're paying it, which I, which I think is a good thing. So thank you, and thank the staff. And Madam Chairman, I would echo the comments just made, uh, especially your point that um, these, these uh, changes should help trigger uh, more honest uh, and robust conversations that need to occur uh, that may at least stabilize the, the rate of growth in uh, people's electric bills uh, going forward. Anyway, good work by the staff and appreciate everybody's uh, help and efforts putting this together. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, so at this time, I'll ask Mr. Bumpen to please take the roll. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Pekoski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. With those enthusiastic yeses, I will uh, say that this decision has been adopted as final and uh, that concludes our regular calendar. So we will move to our consent calendar next. There are 11 items on today's consent calendar for which I will seek a motion, please. Madam Chairman, I would move adoption of today's consent calendar. I'll second it, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Today's consent calendar has been regularly moved and seconded. Mr. Pumpen, please take the roll. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Karen's very enthusiastic today. He, he must be happy to be back there. Pent up demand, yes. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Um, thank you. The consent calendar has been adopted in full. Uh, that brings us to the end of today's regular meeting agenda. 
We will adjourn and reconvene next Wednesday, August 3rd at 10 a.m. by remote teleconference for the next regular meeting. Thank you and have a great day.